You're welcome back. Now we have our darling Akani Mojo. She's joining us via Skype. Now, AK, if you can hear me, how have you been coping with the, the lockdown? I can hear you. Uh, so how have you been coping uh, with the uh, lockdown? I, I am fine. <laughs> I am fine. I am coping has not been easy. Like I, like I, I tell people that I think more work because then I've got to be a mommy, a cook, an employee at the same time. And I, I think I've, I've become more busy, more busy now that we're locked in when I was going to work, yes. Awesome, awesome. Well, it's part of it's part of it's part of um, being doing the lockdown because now you don't have any excuse, so you get to work more. A lot of people are actually working more. You are not alone mm -hmm. in that. Um... <laughs> Take it that you're the super mom, okay? Super All right. So, what did you find rescue. for us in the news? Yes. I... Okay. So, my news today is taken from CNBC, and for me, it's a it's a very the very full one. It says that oil rallies as Trump talks of troops hopes for Saudi and it goes further to read that read that crude oil futures pumped jumped up by ten percent on Thursday, after which is yesterday after U.S. President Donald Trump said he expected Saudi Arabia and Russia to reach a deal soon so that they can end the oil price war, and then also um, President Putin also said he was looking for a solution to. Well, this is a good one for me and a hopeful one for me is because I'm looking, you know, the Algeria, Iraq, and obviously Nigeria. I think we're losing you. I yeah. have to battle with oil prices. Now, before um, before March 8, before the price war began, we're looking at oil $6 per barrel. As of last week, before the wow, we apologize for that. <laughs> the network is quite um, muffled. I can't really hear AK, but thank you so much, AK, for giving us the economic numbers, especially with, with yeah. Um, so quickly, um, so I I was reading a research. So we're, we're going to bring in our guests much later, but let me just okay. quickly read out some things that I found quite interesting about fake news. Okay. Um, an article that was written by Diageo. And um, there's a lady, as, as I was saying earlier, a lady, she was saying, um, that's her name. Her name is Sander van der, van der Liden. She is working, currently working with a team of people. This report came out in 2018, currently working with a team of um, people to create a vaccine that she thinks can help combat the 21st century scourge, which is um, fake news or false news is that possible yeah so you know i read i read the report and i think it make a, it makes a makes lot of sense. sense and let me read out some things that i found she okay. said when they did it, an extensive study doing survey with different people and um it was shown that at least there are five ways most people scrutinize new information before believing it okay. so one is if others believe it Okay. Two is if there's evidence. Three, if it fits our previous, like your previous knowledge. Four is if the internal argument makes sense. Five is if the source is credible. So people would f either believe a new information based, based on, on those five, five. parameters. That is according to their research. Yes. And so, but the interesting thing, when they further um, the research continued, they said. But not many people at times um, take out time to, to, go to go through those questions the before they now make believe that they are, the word was that they are too much uh, in a hurry to take shortcuts to those answers. So that's why fake news. Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, the question, these questions, if you go through them and evaluate them thoroughly, mm -hmm. you would actually. Um, can differentiate if this is real or not, but not many people have that time to go and research it and all of that. That we don't ask probing questions. We feel, we feel um, when we feel right about it, then mm. it's fine. We just take it like that. Mm. So the, the scientist was calling for more autom automatic way of thinking, right? Okay. That if we do that, 
it would help because people right now they just they just want to it's just like um, they just want to fulfill their this this kind of way of yes. thinking it's good but mm -hmm. it only helps to fulfill your your what's it called your everyday lifestyle and yes. you are more vulnerable to to absorb absorbing fake the fake news yeah. I, I agree with you but i i think the four the first four parameters uh a bit dicey but if you go to the source Sometimes it might not, it might, it might make sense, mm. but it's not true. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is believable. That is why you must go through all four. I mean, but all it, five. But it comes from the source. Mm. I think that's the clinch. That's dicey. You know why I say that's dicey? Why? Remember when President Donald Trump made, ah. made the mention of <laughs> chloroquine? What happened? <laughs> so it's quite dicey. So for but you, Donald, as, as you are, you think take... it's supposed to be a credible source, right? But Donald Trump, in this case, is not a medical expert. That's what I'm saying. So, no, so... But for a president of a country to make a statement like that, ah. you would consider that a credible source. So that's why you must go through all five parameters. Okay. Yeah, you must go through all five parameters. But we'll talk more about this. I just mm -hmm. thought to put this out there because um, we're bringing in our expert, Chibweze Ewuzie. He will join us after the break to discuss fake news. Please stay with us. Mm -hmm.